Days. And we are hearing that this uh, mission is scrubbed for right now. Carrie, so I wanted to ask you, with that new information, when is the, the next window for launch? Yeah, well, the next window would be on Friday. And, and let me explain why. I just mentioned to you that when it lifts off, it then unfurls those solar shields to grab the energy. <laughs> We have a lunar eclipse coming up, so it's not going to be able to pick up that sunlight that it needs. So it now moves to Friday. So this is not unusual. If you have seen how launches go, delays are expected. They do happen, and they, they're delayed for good reason, uh, because we have seen disasters in the past. So uh, now we go into they have to deal with the fuel issue, and then they have to, you know, bleed it off. They will refuel it again and everybody will be rechecking all of their data, all of their hardware, and there will be some visual inspections once all of the fuel has been removed to determine about the upcoming Friday launch. Yeah, these, these delays can be disappointing, but there are so many moving parts, they want to get it right. Kerry Sanders, thank you. Well, let's bring in Paul Sutter, Leland Melvin, and Leroy Chow again. Thank you all for being here. And Leroy, wanted to ask you about this. With so many things that could potentially go wrong for a launch like this, what will NASA engineers be looking for uh, before they do end up giving that green light in the days to come? Of course, they're, they're going to go through their procedures to detank the rocket, and then they'll start going in to inspect the engine, engine number three, and find out what valves are, are not working and why they were unable to get that preconditioning with the liquid hydrogen through the engine bell. Uh, the big question is whether or not they can fix this problem on the pad. If so, we could see another attempt on Friday. If they have to roll back to the VAB, uh, the v vertical assembly, assembly building, uh, to remove the engine, then, of course, that we're looking at uh, at least, you know, kind of the month's kind of delay. And if you're just joining us, the news now that the, the launch of the Artemis one has been scrubbed for today, but there is uh, an ongoing window, another opportunity coming up on Friday. Leland, wanted to ask you, the Artemis one mission, when it does happen, is all about testing new technology ahead of an actual crewed mission to the moon. Give us a sense of how much work has already gone into this. Oh, it's been quite a bit of work. I mean, you know, we talked earlier, this is 8.8 8 .8 million pounds of thrust, the the, heavy, the most thrust ever of a rocket going to space. And we're going to have, you know, four people staying on board versus three. It's much more space in the Orion capsule. We have so much more capability. We're launching, you know, CubeSats to go around the moon and do experiments while we're up there. And so this, this new technology is going to help us go further than the moon and do deep space exploration maybe to Mars one day. And I think this technology is going to be the game changer for us living and working on the moon as well as going deeper in space. CubeSats, it even sounds cool. And Paul, part of the new technology here are new materials that could better withstand the extreme conditions in space. Walk us through some of these breakthroughs. Yeah, the space and traveling in space is one of the harshest environments we can possibly travel through. Uh, we have to sustain the heat of the launch itself, which with a combustion of around 5,500 degrees Fahrenheit. We have to survive the frigid depths of space itself, and then we have to survive re-entry back into the atmosphere. And uh, we've developed a lot of technologies with the Apollo missions, with the space shuttle missions. We learned a lot about uh, tiling and thermal tiling with the space shuttle of how to uh, absorb the heat of reentry. And unfortunately, we uh, some of those lessons cost some lives. And we've incorporated that technology into this new generation, again, hopefully to develop a sustainable presence in space where we every generation that passes, we learn more and more and we can do this easier and faster than ever before. Yeah, reentry very important, getting our people home. And it's, it, it's a fun thing to Google if you want to, the advancements in technology that have come from space exploration. Paul, Leland, and Leroy, thank you so much this morning again for being here. Even though that Artemis One launch has been scrubbed, it is not canceled. We hope for that next chance on Friday. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.